what did you think overall of the chapter? Did you like it? Oh, of course. That was like a 10 out of 10 chapter for me. I think that might have been one of the best chapters in the entire arc. I've been saying that Ooh. the last like three weeks, but or like, well, the last three chapters or something. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've all been bangers one after the other. But this one really hit for me because like it had like what, four or five double page spreads in it. We all know yeah, that I, Hidden is I referring was... to the Zoro part of the chapter. That was the best part. Oh, you know, yeah, 10 yeah, out yeah. 10, that 10 was... out of 10. <laughs> Yeah, 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 the one shot. I was I wasn't ready for that. Literally on that same page as I was reading it, I was like, Zoro stocks, what's going on? He looks pretty worn out. And then like the right, like the next panel to the left is him one shotting Luchi. So, and I I really hope that you clip this and put this on Twitter so people realize that I'm a Zoro fan because there are too many people who think that I'm a Sanji fan, bro. Um, I like I said, I don't hate Sanji, but unfortunately, uh, Zoro, our Lord and Savior, ended up shouting the bum, Luchi. This man has taken nothing but L's. That's why we call him Luchi, bro. Um, oh, damn. Uh, otherwise, the worm is probably... I still love the worm, bro. The worm is my favorite part of the chapter. I I love his veneers. I think that he's a, a, a cute little boy. I love him. Best chapter. You what do you think of the Gorosei? And who is your favorite, least favorite? Do you like the design? Yeah, uh, I like all of them. I think they're all very cool. Uh... Like, obviously, they're giant monsters. Like, I, I, I gotta, you know, hype that in one piece. We don't get that very often. My favorite has to be Venus Juro. I, I like the the samurai centaur, like, death thing. Like, is so cool. I feel you. Uh, like, Zoro's running theme in the story is overcoming death. Becoming the king of hell. The king of hell is also equated with death. Like, they don't have, like, a grim reaper in a cloak mm -hmm. in, in their mythology. What they have is... A, a king of hell who rules over all of life after they die and he decides basically when you die where you go after you die he's death and the devil at the same time basically combined into like one figure so like the fact that Zoro's final opponent might just be like a skeleton horse which if you know about the four horsemen of the apocalypse one of them one of the four horsemen is death and death rides a pale horse which a pale horse is another way to describe a sickly skeleton looking horse so, like, the idea that Zoro's, like, final opponent potentially is the Pale Horse itself, that's also a centaur samurai guy. I, I think it's, like, so fitting, so perfect. I saw that, and it was, like, instantly my favorite. I was like, this has to be my number one. In Egyptian mythology, there's an Egyptian serpent called Apophis, and a sandworm, basically. And what the mythology says is he tried to eat the sun, and then Ra, the sun god, sawed his head off. Like... A sawing sun. So if you remember from the chapter, the sawing sun. So it's like Yo. straight up. Yeah. <laughs> Apophis eats the, tries to eat the sun. The god punishes him and saws off his head. So that's straight up right out the mythology. That's my, That might be directly what Oda's referencing. Insane. I think that these designs are, are so cool too. Um, yeah. I think that the only design that looks like goofy goofy to me is Saturn because it's just his face. <laughs> that's yeah. Funny. He looks like a devilish Santa Claus. Like it does. Yeah, he does. He kind of does. You're right. I think the worm is cool. People who don't like the worm, uh, they're they're not seeing the vision of 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 the worm. I love his teeth. I think that the teeth are the best part of the worm. Uh, it's so <laughs> Big, funny. Like, he's got like dentures in there. It's awesome. I love it. I'm scared of its cavities, bro. What are you talking about? I think like, it's cool. Okay. <laughs> I love the worm. I love the worm. This worm, bro. I can't, I can't bro. Like, How dare the you. fact that it has perfect teeth. It's like, I'm telling you, I told her, like, like did, did he just go get veneers? Like, is he, the, he, he he's on that, on that Goro Sedental plan, bro. Like, what is <laughs> happening? Like, I was, I was looking at that and I was like, I was like, bro, like, this doesn't look menacing because I literally looked at the panel. I was like, everybody has crazy teeth, crazy, like monster teeth. And then you have Mr. Jupiter with like the perfect like smile, yeah. bro. The, the, the like he takes care of his I, mouth. <laughs> he, bro, his grill it doesn't good, make sense. He's good hygiene. <laughs> you think his teeth are yellow? It's like, it's like, I feel like it'd be worse if they colored it in and it's like bright yellow oh, teeth. Like, yeah, like yellow. Ugh, like, yeah. That would I could be, see that. Honestly, honestly, at that moment he would be menacing. I would be like, yo, he stank. <laughs> you know, I, he really stank. No, they definitely stink. They they got they got the breath of all things. <laughs> Breath of all things is crazy. Yo, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it makes sense that they're Pokemon because like they have like a second like like an evolution. They have like a remix 2.0 version that yeah. comes out afterward. It's like it's like like I don't know, it's just so yeah. funny to me. They have yeah, like they're, like they're... evolution zones or like Eevees, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally. What do you think like 
like their power is I don't think it's devil fruit powers. I was actually I called this like three weeks before the chapter dropped, so I'm actually pretty proud of that. I, I was saying that uh I was saying that maybe they're not devil fruit users and you know how like if if there's a mythical zone and this is the Phoenix mythical zone, mm -hmm. the user of the fruit is not the original creature. I was thinking that these guys aren't devil fruit users. They're the actual creature that a devil fruit would be made from. So like if there was a Gyuki mm -hmm. mythical zone devil fruit, you know, Saturn is the Gyuki that the Devil Fruit would be based on, right? So like, Interesting. I see it as like they're the actual original creature, and then they just have the ability to shape shift into humans. A lot of demons in mythology have the ability to shape shift and look like humans. That's like a common, really common thread between, especially in Eastern mythology, Western mythology too. A lot of like Greek gods were able to just take human form and walk among men, you know, like talk and look like people. The magic circles are some ancient kingdom thing if you look on the magic circles this chapter you, we get a close look at them you can see a weird ancient language inscribed around the circle True. which i haven't looked at it too closely but i wouldn't be surprised if it's maybe the same language that's written on the poneglyphs like the possibility that they all regenerate in different ways so saturn can regenerate by like you know it just rapidly heals or maybe he reverses time or something to help regenerate uh oh. and then we have, uh, what's his name? Jupiter with the worm. He regenerates like a worm does. Like if you cut him, yeah. they can regrow. Mm -hmm. Maybe with Venus, right? He's a skeleton horse. So if you destroy the skeleton, the bones like all fall to the ground, but then they can just reform into the horse or whatever. You know, like a skeleton, you know, y you've seen it in like many That's things. So you like knock a skeleton yeah. into bones and then they just reform themselves as a skeleton like That's i could see cool. him regenerating that way so like i think all of them might have some different regeneration com capabilities you think you think sanji's opponent is jupiter if, if somebody has to be sanji's opponent i would honestly pick i would honestly pick the bird because sanji can like you know skywalk, skywalk. skywalk. i think that mm -hmm. sanji's opponent is going to be mars and zoro's mm -hmm. opponent is going to be venus and the reason I think this is yeah. because if we look at the Gorosei and then Emu, which planet is Emu in the system, right? Emu is probably Earth. Mm -hmm. If we have to guess, like, of all the planets, which one would Emu be? Probably Earth, Gaia, whatever you want to call it. Well, the two neighboring planets to the left and right of Earth are Venus and Mars. Those are the left and right hands of Earth, basically. Those so two we, planets. Yeah. yeah, so if we have uh, Zoro to the left and Sanji to the right of Luffy... What is it? Venus and Mars. Those those are their opponents, right? The summoning circles, they had numbers yeah. on the inside. Yeah. Each Gorosei has a number. So when Saturn came in, he had fives going around the star. Mm -hmm. But each of them have a different Jupiter number. Jupiter was number one. Yeah. 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 Jupiter was number one, which is interesting. I don't know what that's... You but, know. you know, a lot of people think that it's like... Some people think it's like who's more powerful. I think it's like the age, personally. Mm. What do you think about the ages? Like, how do you think that works? Because... There's another theory I've heard about that. Okay, so I I see I seen a theory about that where like um it's when they got the uh, their immortality surgery. Oh yeah yeah I, and, I like that. And I think I think that's very interesting because like that's because like you know like um Saturn hasn't changed one bit from like God Valley so probably no. Jupiter just got his immortal immortal surgery like like not a long time ago like you know like when he was like younger in his younger ages you know. Maybe oh, it's all the Gorosei age every time they transform. Like uh, maybe it's maybe the reason Jupiter is the youngest is because he's transformed the least out of all of them. What if Emu's like always transformed when we see them, and they're just some random person walking around like otherwise? Yeah, because we saw we saw Emu like turn into some giant shadow monster thing when Sabo like saw Cobra get killed. Mm. I wonder if yeah. Emu's always in a hybrid form. And then just has yeah. like a normal form. Uh, people have like the the statue of Skypea, right? And they're like mm -hmm. they're saying that Emu could possibly be that. It's like, oh, interesting. But when you awaken a zone, there's a chance that the zone takes over your will. Mm. And I've always written off like everyone talks about how goofy Luffy has been since he got Gear Five, like laughing at everything, never really taking things seriously. Yeah. I don't think that's Luffy's fault. I think that's he has Nika's like soul basically inside of him taking yeah. over like when he's awakened he's basically fighting nika's will inside of him and it's neat whenever luffy is like laughing uncontrollably that's that's the nika part so like yes. maybe you're right like the gorosei couldn't control the monster that that they 
got from their fruit and they awakened it and then it took them over basically conquered their will do you think that Nozuru is stronger than Mihawk or do you think that Mihawk is still stronger <laughs> than Nozuru? I don't know. I would say that if there's any argument to be made for any character in One Piece being stronger than Mihawk as a swordsman, it's Venus because he is the only one in the story that wouldn't have to vie for the title of world's strongest swordsman because he's hidden. He basically... Mm -hmm. He hides his swordsman skills. He's in Marijuana the whole time. He's never really had to leave the Holy Land to fight anyone. So if you were trying to become world's strongest swordsman, he's not on your list of opponents because he's out of the picture. He's not going to come down to fight you. You're not going to be able to go up there and fight him. Most people probably don't even know that he's a skilled swordsman. It's only now that he came to Egghead that he's showing what he's capable of doing. So I can't say for sure if, if he's stronger than Mihawk. If I had to guess just based on the severity of the situation and that these guys have been running the world for 800 years, I would, yeah, I might have to give it to him. Like, yeah, he's probably stronger than Mihawk. I'm like a D1 Mihawk hater because I hate Mihawk fans. I think that they're super annoying and they have this elitism <laughs> to them. Um, taking my bias aside, uh, Mihawk definitely has never fought Venus, right? Like there's, there's yeah. no possibility that this could have happened. We also see that Venus in this chapter seems to have a black blade. Um, could it just be a hockey coated one? Yes. Could Oda have retconned it that he's always had a black blade? Probably. Um, I think that there's like a, a, a single other panel in which he doesn't have a black blade. But the thing is, is that Oda be retconning stuff all the time. You know what I mean? And I think that this retcon would make sense considering that probably has been around at least at some point since the void century or a little bit after the void century has been a swordsman for years if anybody knows how to blacken their blade it doesn't make sense for mihawk to know and and uh venus not to right it doesn't make yeah. sense for venus to not be one of the most skilled swordsmen in the world especially knowing what we know now uh to say that mihawk is just the strongest ever just because he has this title is completely taking out of context the story what do you think of zoro versus Lucci? I don't think Zoro could have one-shotted him from the minute they started fighting, because if he could have, he would have just done that. Like, there's no reason to play with his food. They're in a very serious situation. Uh, Zoro looks worn by the end of the fight. Like, I you know, know, I know the meme The meme is that, oh, he one-tapped Luffy or Luchi, but that's not what actually happened. What happened with Zoro versus Luchi is they had a fight the same way all of Zoro's fights go. You know, he fights the opponent, chapter cuts away to something else, Back to Zoro fighting the opponent, cut away to something else, back to Zoro fighting him, and then Zoro does his finishing move and beats the guy. So, like, it wasn't... They, they traded blows the whole time. Luchi and Zoro were exchanging blows. They were fighting. We just didn't see the fight because there's much more important stuff happening on Egghead. Oda's not going to just show us this extended fight between Zoro and Luchi. So, he gave us these little cutaways to, like, what's going on with them in the background. But ultimately... You know, I think Lucci gave him a good fight. Zoro does not look like he didn't break a sweat. He definitely he had some sure. wounds. He had some he had some scuff marks on his face. It was it was not an easy fight. I think that was like something like a mid diff, uh, if anything, maybe a high diff. Listen, I think that Lucci's a bum, bro. Zoro should just <laughs> one shot at him as soon as it happened. Unfortunately, Oda had to put some padding in because if Zoro ends up coming to Saturn, I'm sorry, but it's a no diff. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, my glorious king had to be held back by the plot, but I just, I, I feel like Zoro in this fight, and especially during Egghead, I feel like he's trying to, like, really get control of Enma to the point where he can now use Advanced Conqueror's Hockey, and I think that he was, he's been using a lot of these as learning experiences, because, I mean, like we said, there's not really a lot more a lot more opponents that he can do this against um i think yeah. that although he probably could like i could go full out and like just one shot this person right with like a, a a really big move he's like let me see how i can actually you know what i mean control this because in my opinion zoro is at this point really close to reaching his dream also like when it comes to their fight honestly i find it very like um, at first i was mad because i was like why did it take you so long to like just one shot him but then I was like, you know what? It's plot. Like I hate, I hate when people like talk about like, oh, it's a, you know, you, he got held uh, held by plot. But honestly, when you think about it, like, because if he would have one shot at him since the beginning, let's say, he would have been able to go and help Sanji, and Stella wouldn't have died, and the message wouldn't have been broadcasted. So I think for the plot to like work, 
Sanji had to be alone because I don't count Frankie. I'm sorry. Like yeah, Frankie. Like he, he did some cra- <laughs> amazing stuff against like a Saturn, but like it's not enough. Let's be honest here. So we needed Stella to die for the plot, so the message gets broadcasted, and we needed also Stella to die so Kizaru doesn't come back also on the battlefield. I think that we needed to isolate. Isolate Kizaru, get him out of here. Because in my opinion, Kizaru is not coming back. He's like, even if he can still fight, he's like, mentally, he's like, I don't want to be there anymore. I d- uh, I've done my mission. I'm not coming back. Do you guys think that Kizaru is like done for? Or like, is he coming back? Is something happening? Is this change of heart? Like, what do you guys think about Kizaru? I feel like he's mentally tapped out. I, I think that he's just, he doesn't really want to be here anymore. <laughs> like, really? So if he does fight, it's only going to be because that's what he's expected to do by the elders. Uh, it's like he's on orders to do that. After the egghead incident's over and they all go back to work, uh, you know, I wonder how they're going to be treating Kizaru after all this because he, he might have been, he might have disappointed them pretty hard. I feel like in terms of yeah, a bit. You know, but I mean, I mean, he did kill Stella. Like, like, like he did do the mission. He did yeah. fulfill his mission. Yeah. But maybe they That's expect true. that. Like, the Gorosei should also know what they're dealing with here. They're dealing with true. their ancient enemy, basically. They're dealing with the sun god Nika. Like, if they just expect, like, Kizaru to be able to solve the problem, they're a little stupid, in my opinion. Honestly, if I was Kizaru and I saw all five of the Gorosei on the island, I'd be like, I think that this ship is really nice. I'm gonna I'm lay here really quickly. Luffy took me out. Even if I'm not taken out, I'd, like, I'd like sit back up and be like, Right. They got this, they got this. <laughs> right, right back down, right back down. So like, we saw Sanji when he was looking at the bird, he was like, everybody, like he was talking to Nami, was like, okay, you guys leave. I'm gonna stay here with Luffy. So this spurred out some theories about like, are this straw hat gonna split, you know? So what do you think, Hidden? Are they splitting? Like, what what is happening? Uh, mm-hmm. No, they're gonna leave together. I, I just think that, I think Oda is just creating a situation where they're all separated now. So that they have to come head to head with each of the Gorosei individually and mm. like realize how strong these guys are before they leave the island. I think Dory and Bragi might sacrifice themselves to help them get out of the island. Mm-hmm. Like the end of Little Garden, how they like they they shot the goldfish and then they're like, Alright guys, see ya. They like wave them away from the island. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be like with Egghead. They're gonna be Aww. like, guys, we're gonna hold you, we're gonna hold off the Gorosei for you. It's been good to see you again. But we'll Aww. see you later. And then as they're, like, sailing away from Egghead, we see Dory and Bragi, like, waving them goodbye, like, for the last time. Oh, just like just like so... Little Garden. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'll cry. I'll I would, cry. If they, I would yeah. love... I've been saying... Yo, I, I think that the, the giants <laughs> are going to stay behind you. Honestly, I think Egghead, with the deaths and with the, the character sacrifices, has been so good. I am on the other side where, like, I think there's going to be a split. Um, for oh. multiple reasons. So first reason is that um, the rest of the Straw Hats cannot a- anyways help Sanji, Jinbei, Luffy, and Zoro in their fights. I'm sorry, they're, they're too weak. Um, and um, they need to get Bonnie to safety. And whoever Vegapunk is left alive, and I guess they have Kuma with them. So they need to, like, th- that's their mission. Like, like that's the, the first priority. Bonnie needs to, like, you need to be saved. So I think that they're gonna go with the Sunny um, and leave. And get to Elba first, and uh, you know, and that way we can also focus on Usopp and the rest, so they can get their shine, their power ups, like their little training arc, something, you know, because they don't get a lot of shine when like these monsters are with them, you know. And I think that both of them, wh- while they go there, <laughs> this is just a theory, like a prediction, they're gonna fall on Kid somewhere <laughs> and bring him to Elba as well. <laughs> This is this yeah. is just a theory of mine. I think that would be very interesting. What do you think about the idea that Kid, since he's he got knocked out like right outside of Elbaf, that they maybe save him, that the Elbaf people save him, like he washes up on the shore, and they actually treat him as a hero because he's because of famous Mom, for man. taking down Big Mom, right? I like think, that's, I think that's that's exactly what's happening. That's yeah, because if, if it's if, yeah, he, he made the news. He made the news for taking down yeah. Big Mom. If it, they're gonna know that Quite he was totally. responsible, they they treat they hate big mom so much on elbaf that they refuse to say her name like that's how that's how much they hate her yeah <laughs> so what do you what do you think um so do you think we're gonna get the message soon and also what is the message about yeah so i think if we're going at the current pace of like so like the last chapter the, the countdown started 10 yeah, minutes this minutes. chapter seven so like three minutes per chapter if oda keeps that consistent pace 
we have maybe a few more chapters where they have to hold off the Gorosei, and then uh, another chapter where Vegapunk does the announcement. Maybe two chapters of the announcement. And then after that, they have to get off the island. So, like, I think we have maybe ten chapters or so left to Egghead, if I had to guess. Like, we're almost done. But this is the one countdown that it's the inversion of the typical countdown at the end of an arc. So, like, Skypea, Alabasta, uh, Ennius Lobby. There's always, like, a countdown for Dressrosa. There's always, like, a countdown thing where it's, like, we have to stop the villain before the timer runs out. In Egghead, it's the opposite, though. The heroes are the one with the countdown, right? It's it's Luffy. The countdown is for the villains. The villains have to stop the good guys before the countdown runs out. And the good guys just have to hold them off for the countdown. This is actually in their favor. So it's like, it's the one time Oda has actually reversed it. And it's like, no, no, no. The good guys actually have the upper hand now. And it's on the bad guys to stop them. And we just have to survive. I think Vegapunk's going to talk about... Uh, a little bit of the Void Century, just give some context. I think he's going to talk about the point of the Ancient Weapons. And I think the most important drop in that entire speech is going to be the name of the Ancient Kingdom. Yep. The reason I think that is because of Clover. And Clover, you know, Vegapunk basically inherited Clover's will. At the beginning of the arc, we had uh, Shaka saying the will of Ohara lives. So it's clear, like, this is following up on the Ohara incident. Mm -hmm. I just hope it's something that's cool. Uh, this chapter's name was Planetfall. I, it'd be really cool if the the Ancient Kingdom name was something like Godfall or like you know what I mean, like like uh like Eclipse, like some something something planetary based. I think would be really interesting. Um, if it's just like like Ohio, I'd be like yo. <laughs> yeah. Ohio, Ohio, no, no, you know what? Sai said North just, Dakota. North Dakota. It's just like some random, yeah, like. <laughs> that was so funny. It was like, I was like, imagine, imagine something so mean. Yeah. I do believe that, I think that maybe in a message he's gonna say, he's not gonna say Emu exists, but he's gonna say there's a king who's sitting on the throne. And I think that's going mm -hmm. to like, everybody's gonna go nuts about this. Like, this is like the information, like, like, this is the, 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 the one information that the girls who don't want to get out like more than the ancient kingdom i think yeah like like oh because it's 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 you can't have that like everybody like put their sword like all the kingdoms and like everybody's like you know there's no one king but like there is a king now also i wanted to ask you guys like what do you guys think like do you guys think uh, oda's gonna do something with the ancient robot because like i feel like i feel like listen i'm gonna be honest with you I'm still holding on. This is like a prediction for me that like in the next chapters, like how they're gonna escape or something, how they're gonna like get out of the situation. The ancient robot is gonna do something because yeah. I can't believe that he introduced him. He powered up for two seconds and then he 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 started looking east like dragon. Like no, like <laughs> he he has to do something with the ancient robot. What do you guys think? Definitely, no, definitely. I mean, I, I think uh, Oda only had the eyes power on like a few chapters ago. So what what's what's happening is. He wants us to, he wants to drop the little seed of information that, okay, the robot's turning on for some reason. Let's cut away. Let's look at mm -hmm. what else is happening on the island. And then when we just start to forget about the robot, then yeah. the robot's going to come in and do some shit. And that, that's going to be like a big surprise. Like, oh, you thought, you thought it was like over for the good guys. Okay. Well, here's this giant ancient robot. You know, it's, mm -hmm. they, they. The Gorosei are not having a good day. They're not having a very good time. Facts. And I think it's only going to get worse for them. Like, okay, so you're telling me our genius scientist is about to broadcast our secrets to the world and the sun gods on this island and the ancient robot we were, like, worried about 200 years ago is waking up and all the Elbaf giants are pulling oh up here. God. And it's like... Crazy. It, like, how much worse can it get for the world? Oh, oh, and Bonnie can control all the pacifista. So, like, shit, like, what do we do? <laughs> you know, like, they're in a very bad spot. Another Zunisha, right? It's gonna be like, <laughs> Joy Boys return! All right, bye! Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like a robot, like, text-to-speech voice. <laughs> what are you guys' prediction for the next chapter? I just think we're gonna get early Gorosei matchups. Like, we're gonna see who they're matched mm -hmm. up with in advance. And then, like I said earlier, they're not gonna be able to actually fight them right now. But we're going to see who's going to be fighting who later in the story, I think. Like, we might have a little short clash with Zoro and Venus. We might have Sanji, because he was watching Mars dive bomb into the Labo Stratum. So, I think Sanji might go up there and try and stop him. Um, we're just going to have a few little matchups start and happen. And then maybe, 
maybe the giant does something this next chapter. I think that we're definitely going to get those early matchups. Um, I'm hoping we get the message. Uh, I'm assuming we're going to get to the chapter and it's like, man, I can't believe it's only been five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a <laughs> bit, uh, only a minute has passed between the last <laughs> chapter and this one. It's like, oh, okay. I think for the next chapter, um, Sanji's gonna stop the bird from going to the ship. They're gonna uh, and the, the half of the straw hat is gonna are gonna escape. Um, um, Zoro is gonna go to Nasturo to try to like fight him. Jimbe is gonna fight one of them, one of the Gorosei as well. Um, uh, Luffy's gonna take on uh, also one of them with the giant. I think there's gonna be matchups, but I also think. And this is like just a theory of mine, maybe not this chapter, maybe in the next chapters. I think that um, Katarina, Devon, and Van Auger saw that the um, uh, uh, that all of the Gorosei are on the island and they told Blackbeard. And Blackbeard is going to like maybe, you know, be like, yo, Lafitte, go to Marijuas and go scout for me. Like there's nobody, like it's time, you know, or something like that. Yeah. I feel like, because like, it's such, you know, he's a man of opportunity. He's going to see like, the, he sees every opportunity and this is like a golden opportunity. There's nobody, literally, yeah. like who's stopping you? There's just Emu and like, yo, let's go. It's time. So I think that there's something like, like there's something uh, there when it comes to Blackbeard. I could see, I could see him doing it with either Marijua or Elbath. Because if he if he gets word that the giant warrior pirates have left Elbath, and Shanks left Elbath too with the kid fight, I, I can only guess. Um, if Elbath is like left wide open, maybe that's also the place he goes to next. Because I personally think that either an ancient weapon or a road poneglyph is on Elbath right now, and we know that Blackbeard's going to get the location of the other two from caribou so there's a third one that's like up in the air and maybe that's his opportunity to go get that and maybe that's where he has an encounter with shanks because people think blackbeard might kill shanks later also don't forget like there's all the books from ohara on elbaf like it's like also mm -hmm. a mind of like you know like you know blackbeard he wants to know everything so it could be also like just to get like you know information yeah. as yeah. well that's scary mm -hmm. 